Folks, I've got a wonderful project for all of us today that will help us burn through some of our scraps and our extra time in our sewing rooms when we're not working on our masterpieces. That's right, folks, we are going to make today a giant fabric rug wrapping our fabric scraps around cording. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. It is so great to see everybody on the other side of the camera for a fantastic tutorial today. And yes, folks, I did. I knew most of you have been following along. I've been working on this giant fabric or corded uh, fabric wrapped rug for about six weeks now and I've had a blast. But before we get started with today's tutorial, please allow me to apologize. I did film a lot of the early work, the setup, the starting and all of the cording and everything, but something happened to that footage. I've already checked, I do not have it. So I'm gonna be just using a very easy sample roll today to explain how I've built this rug for all of you. Um, and really it is so simple. There's just a couple of super, super easy steps, folks. But I wanted to finish the rug today. We have just a few inches of cord to still stitch around the outside of this, but I do need to teach you all how to start before I can teach you how to finish such a project. And before I teach you anything physically, I wanna talk about a lot of the rumors that are out there. And this is partly my concern that I had. The first one was, can we make a rug this big that will genuinely lie flat? And the answer is absolutely. Many of you have seen that we can make these really fun little uh, corded or fabric wrapped corded bowls. So it is a, basically it's a quarter inch. It's like three, what was it? Um, 17 30 seconds rope I got at the hardware store. I'm working on having supplies for you. Once I get them, they'll be in the link in the description below for the cording. Um, but nonetheless, yes, it's a cotton cording, often called clothesline. I was acquiring mine at the hardware store. And to create the bowls, we add pressure while stitching and we cause it to curl while we're working on it. The concept of this being so large and maybe not having enough workspace, that was a fear of many of my friends is, will you be able to keep it flat? And the answer is yes, I was, but I did a couple of different things that I'll explain throughout today's video that helped me in that process, okay? So uh, either flat or uh, into a bowl shape, um, that's uh, the same techniques will apply. It's just how you manipulate the work that you're actually doing, okay? So that was one of the big rumors. The other one was, will it take a ton of time? And absolutely it did, but that's what I was looking for. I wanted a project that I could add a little bit of more uh, sewing time to my day. I wanted it put in maybe an hour or two. I wrapped the fabric around the cord. Oh, maybe five or six hours worth of television I was watching with my family. Um, I wrapped both a little bit and stitched. I also wrapped 200 plus foot and then stitched. So I've run into several different challenges, but it's all very, very, very doable, folks. And so let's go ahead and start the lesson plan as we can. And because the rug is so wonderful and pliable, I'm just gonna kind of fold it in half a little bit now, rolling it a little bit out of the way so that you can kind of still see it here. So um, the other thing is I wanted to use up my scraps. I wanted an ongoing project I could come back to and start over and come back and start over, that kind of thing. So I used two and a half inch wide by however long I had strips. Two and a half inches wide is a very common measurement that we do for making squares and or binding strips. So a lot of us have these extra binding strips that have already actually been pressed in half with the right sides out because the way I'm gonna make this and show you all how to make this, there are no raw edges. So this rug is gonna be beautiful. We're not gonna have it start to fray over time because all of this is finished edge on the rug that you're seeing. So I use probably 600 plus strips. I just went through my stash starting with complete collections I had. That's why you see the rainbow in the beginning of the rug. I made three different projects over the last few months that had these rainbows of fabrics and I used up all of the remaining scraps, cut them at two and a half inches by whatever I had. So some of them might've been 18 or 22 because they were fat quarters. Some of them were 44 inches. Uh, one of the greens in here, I'd actually was a backing piece I had. So it was 108. So. Basically, you're gonna make yourself a huge variety of strips, and then I'd like you to put them in your color order. Now, I said your color order, so on mine, I was using my Rainbow Influence, 
working in a rainbow palette all the way through, kind of from yellow all the way back out to green. This is gonna sit upstairs in my wonderful garden room. So I have about six to eight inches of green fabric on the outside edge. That helps it read as a green rug. Uh, I've already put it up on location. So that's a part of the color management. I was very, very determined to try to keep sewing light to dark, light to dark in my strips. So there's a couple of more products I'm gonna recommend that you all have handy. Um, first of all, just for keeping your actual strips organized, uh, these wonderful little clips were fantastic because as I'm rolling, the fabric over the cording, I need to be able to control it and not have too much cord or fabric because I'll get this twisted, tangled up mess like, it's like wet spaghetti everywhere. It just doesn't work. So learning to manage it is something that we're also gonna discuss. So having these little uh, clips, we have these here for you at Stitch in Heaven. They're wonderful. And I was able to clip several rolls at a time, keeping them organized. The other thing I was using were some straight pins that had numbers on them. So I knew my first roll, my second roll, and I usually did about 10 rolls at a time. So one day I'd spend several hours preparing rolls. Another day I'd spend several hours wrapping the fabric around the cord. Another day I would spend several hours zigzagging the cords together. So that's the three steps. I just explained the way it works really. And so it was, it was that project I could just come back to a little bit each day. As the rug got larger, it became a bit more of a space management. So then I just decided, let's get this finished. Let's get this tutorial made and have some fun. Okay, so now we're gonna learn how to do um, what this is. And as the tutorial goes on, I'll talk about how I built some tables and things around it, and then I unbuilt them as well. But let's learn how we're gonna do this. So again, our cording, um, excuse me, cording is roughly, we're gonna call it quarter inch. It was like, like I said, something weird, 13, 17, 30 seconds or whatever it was. Then we have our strips. These are two and a half inches wide, folded in half, pressed with the right sides out. And to start everything, what I really wanna do is I want to tuck the tail of my cord up inside. I'm going to wrap this over. Immediately should have pointed out that this folded edge is my finished edge. So then as I come around here and I start to just wrap, now I have automatically nothing but folds, all finished edge around on my fabric. And then I will begin to kind of at first twist just to get a couple of inches so that I can kind of let everything relax. But I wanna point out just in twisting that little bit, look, I got one loop there. Things are starting to twist here. So what I also found is I let my cord, no matter if it was 200 foot, there, and I didn't mention, there is 650 foot of cord used in the rug that I have today. The rug is basically a 60 inch circle, okay? Leaving the cord, dropping here, and then being able to now hold, and I could grab and flip over, and then we basically just need to Make sure that we're going down about half the distance of the cord as we work, okay? Now, the one thing I will say about my rug is I started trying to make it as an oval shape. It finished as a circle shape, and I have a little bit of wave in the rug that will lay flat. It won't trip anybody, but it's not mm, perfect. So I'm gonna suggest you either do a circle or a square or a really exaggerated oval. My oval wasn't big enough that I was able to keep the shape of the oval while manipulating the rug as the rug got huge. So that's a little side point if I can give that to you. Now, if the phone rings, if I need to get a glass of water, use the restroom, anything like that, what I do is I just go ahead and I keep a cord here, or excuse me, a clip here on the cord. I try not to get it more than about six or eight inches of cord hanging down there because it becomes harder and harder to manipulate. You wanna take your clip off before you keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping, okay? So now let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna begin, how we're gonna get into this little shape here. Okay, so one of the things I found is I wanna go ahead and I wanna make myself a nice tight little circle and I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna to try to roll it. Okay. 
This is the hardest actual part of the entire project, folks. Once we get it rolled, I wanna put a couple of straight pins and I can't show you right now because I've got the pinch, but I'm putting it all the way through everything, keeping enough cord in front of you that you can work effectively. And now this is the next thing we wanna keep in mind. I'm gonna wrap it a little bit more. I'm gonna give myself a straight pin through there as soon as I get it out of my thumb, ouch. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to make sure that your cording is on the right side of your body, on the right side of the machine. This will allow us to continually build and the entire project will grow this way, not grow into the machine. This is probably the most important part is making sure that when you start, your cord is in your right hand over on the right side of the machine. Careful not to poke yourself like I just did there with the pins. Okay, I think you can see here, it's a nice, tight, tight little roll, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to manipulate and zigzag as I go around. Now at first, I'm gonna use an open toe foot on the machine so I can see where I'm at. As soon as I get through this beginning phase, I am gonna go ahead and switch over to an edge guide foot. I'm gonna slide this in and you can hopefully see that this is gonna begin right on the start of this circle, okay? The start of the curl where the tip of the cording and everything is in there. My machine has got a zigzag. I have a zigzag set at 3.6 millimeters and a stitch length of 1.4. I use the default of the machine because I'm gonna be switching my machine from straight stitch to zigzag. Every time we add more fabric rolls to the existing work, we're gonna sew them on on the bias with a straight stitch. So I need to be able to go back and forth either to two different sewing machines, but it's much easier just to switch straight stitch back to zigzag. If you have a fancy machine and you can program, you may wanna go a little bit wider than the 3.5 uh, or 3.6 on your zigzag. But for me, again, I'm just using the default, meaning that whenever I go to zigzag, it's the same width. Whenever I go back to straight stitch, it's the same length so that I'm consistent over and over again. Okay, coming in here real nice and tight. I'm on that zigzag. Eventually I will leave needle down mode on. And I've got those pins in there, so I'm just being real careful to try not to stitch onto those pins too much. Now, once I get over to this, I gotta pivot. I'm gonna pivot all the way around and kind of come back in and catch that edge again. So the center can be a, possibly a little sloppy looking. And also you'll notice here, I'm bringing all of my cording around to the machine. And same will be with the roll here in just a second. So we just keep zigzagging around working our way around our little circle. And once you feel like it's secure, then you can start to pull your pins out again so that you're not really stitching over those pins too much. I've also found that having my little stiletto handy is great because I can push it in here and I can help manipulate the fabric as I keep zigzagging because we're gonna zig in one layer of cord and fabric and we're gonna zag onto the other. As you can see here, I'm gonna plant that. I'm gonna rotate, get this last pin out of the way. And here you can just see as I'm now starting to get traction, I can literally use my stiletto to make sure I'm stitching both layers of fabric wrapped cord. You can see it going in one and the other, one and then the other. I'm using that stiletto to manipulate. And that's exactly how we get our start going, okay? As I slide the center over, I want to point out I used a green variegated polyester thread for the entire project. Polyester is stronger than cotton. The two layers of cotton wrapped around the cotton cord, really strong. This is going to last for a long time as a functioning rug that we're going to walk on, the pets are going to lay on and everything. But you can usually see that middle is going to be a little rough. So you might want to use a better matching thread. But again, I knew I was going to green 
green. So I used a green to blue variegated throughout the whole rug. And at a distance, you really don't see what is happening um, within each and every stitch. But if that's something of concern, you may want to match your threads. And of course, I want you to use the same thread in your bobbin as you're using in the top because the rug is going to be reversible. It may fade over time, so we're going to want to be able to flip it. I'm also going to spray my rug with Scotch Guard to try to prevent any soiling and whatnot. So that's part of the importance of planning and prepping for all of this um, and just being ready. So now the other thing I could point out here is my hands are very close to the machine and this is going to be very challenging. So I used to like to make sure that I had several feet of cord wrapped with my fabric. So this is when I would unclip and then I would just start wrapping. And now folks, you are tied literally to the sewing machine. You are connected. And so that's why working here with the wrap is a challenge. But as you get further and further away from the machine, it actually gets easier and easier. So if you're building it like me, it's going to be an ongoing project and you may keep building it larger and larger as you go, as you find more fabrics or uh, you just enjoying the project like I was. So I want to teach you two more things now. First, how do we join the cords? And then later, how do we join our fabric strips so that we can just keep building and going on and on? So for the cording, it was very, very simple. What I really did is I shifted the machine to straight stitch. I took the cording that was already in use and I laid it about an inch underneath the, the presser foot. And then I took the new cording, the stuff I was adding onto from the fresh roll, and as I lower the presser foot, I'm going to actually just do some straight stitching and I'm just going to feed nicely into that mush. There's a, there's a bit of a core to this cording. And you can see now I'm going to go ahead and lift up and keep getting a little bit more in there. And then I'm gonna go into my reverse mode and stitch again. And then I'm gonna lift my needle. And then I like to actually take and roll the cord. And we're gonna do this several times until it's really bonded. I don't want too much of a thick overlap, but I do want them connected so that they hold nicely. As you can see, you might want to cut your thread so you don't wrap the threads around your presser foot while you're doing this over and over again. Let's go ahead and do it one more time. So basically just continually sewing from the old piece onto the new piece with a straight stitch and then cutting that. Okay, and I can show you here, it's not pretty but it's strong, and when the fabric wraps over the top of that, you're never gonna see it, okay? So that's the easiest way to join a new piece of cord. They usually come about 100 foot at a time. So I was putting on 100 foot as I went, usually wrapping uh, 20 or 30 foot. But like I said, at one point, I had everything set up, so I just wrapped the last 250 feet or so. It left for some tangles, and there was some twisting and manipulating of the cord while I was working to keep it from twisting up terrible, but it was fine. If I'm adding my fabric strips, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop from where I was working. I'm gonna have about six to eight inches of cord around the, excuse me, fabric around the cord. And I'm gonna have another six or eight inches of tail. So you wanna make sure you add your next fabric strip before you get down too far. So I need to press them back out flat. And there's a new roll waiting for me of the next color I want to add on. And that was why it was real important for me to be going light to dark, light to dark. So I had a really nice union. And then at this point, I have flattened the tip so it's easy to see. And even with solids, you'll still be able to see your crease so you know which is your right side. So take the work, the part you've been working on already, and that's gonna lay on your sewing machine, and that's gonna be technically running horizontally. And then I'm gonna go with the vertical here, and we put these together like this, okay? So that's right sides together on the square, and then I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna sew from that upper corner down here to this lower corner. Cut your threads, double check to make sure it's gonna work, 
And then you can either use your rotary cutter or your scissors that are handy, trim off carefully, roughly a quarter inch, and then I actually go back to the iron and I'm gonna press this really nice and flat. Having a nice crisp edge on that fold really makes rolling the fabric around the cording quite easy. So now I would have a whole new roll and I would begin wrapping the cord again, uh, definitely down over this section that I just spliced together. And then I would put a clip to hold it and then I would continue sewing um, around the project, adding on until I usually got to about the place where the rope and the cord was at the edge of my machine. I like to have another few inches so I could start to manipulate it here. That brings me to yet another point. Please notice the location of my sewing machine. As the rug has grown larger and larger, I've actually pushed the sewing machine further to the middle of my table and the very farthest edge. That's why you're only seeing a little bit of it. So as we get ready to finish this rug together, I wanna to go back and talk about the edge guide foot. The edge guide foot here has this little bar in the center that is gonna be riding between my layers of wrapped cord, and that's gonna help me zig and zag very nicely between the two layers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch out my feet real quick. And when I stopped the sewing on the rug to bring you all to this point, I chose a union of fabric color strips so that when I basically double up my zigzag, it's not so apparent. So we're gonna do the same thing now as we get ready to start. We're gonna go ahead and find the end point. Notice I'm finishing the edge of the rug like we often do with our quilts with a very dark color. And um, I also want you to note real quick that right now I just have the table here. So what I did during the sewing process is I had a couple of extra extension tables from my other um, sewing machines. So I did build, I even used some of the kits from Stitch in Heaven, um, space to make this tall enough. But then I even got to the point where that was not enough. So during the last several hours of stitching where I was building on the greens, I was just working with this table here in the middle. What I found our key to keeping this flat is just keeping our hands here flat I also did start wearing one of the Machinger's gloves. This has got a silicone grip on my tip, so it made it much easier for me to handle this rug. The rug is quite heavy, folks. So as I manipulate around here, oh, that was gonna make a big noise, wasn't it? Let's just set that there now for a second. But um, here we go. So I'm bringing this around. Turn my iron off so we don't have any disasters. And I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna drop that presser foot I was talking about maybe an inch back from where I left off, okay? And so now I need to remember to go to my zigzag mode. Remember default, so I can just go right into my zigzag. And folks, look at this. The rug is so heavy now, if I don't move it, it's not going anywhere. So what I found is I would push with my left hand and I put my right finger right up against the tip of my presser foot so I could really make sure that I was pushing the rug against the new piece. And about every five or six inches, I'm grabbing the back end of the rug over here and I'm manipulating it so that this looks fairly straight as I'm sewing. And I'm afraid that's actually what happened to the oval. It wasn't exaggerated enough from the beginning that when I was doing this, I just kind of kept on sewing and I created a little bit more curve. But the truth of the matter is, I'm just taking a little bit at a time. I've also set my machine to a medium pace. I don't wanna be going too fast because I wanna push the fabric and the rug and everything through. You might note that if you're doing this for an hour or two, your back and your arm might get tired. I also was grabbing the rug back here and just moving it at the same pace. I can move it from back here but I felt like it was shifting a little bit more under the needle. So my most accurate way of doing this is truly to um, have my hand nice and wide, nice and flat across the whole table here because it's that flatness right here and the not pushing or pulling and the not dragging of this cord. If you wanna make a bowl, you're pulling on this cord tighter and tighter so it's like you're shortening the distance, right? Right now I'm keeping this super, super loose. It's just floating behind me. 
and we're almost ready for the finishing steps. I got lucky. I happened to have enough dark cording to go all the way around the rug, or enough dark fabric around the cording to go all the way around the rug. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to bring this dark tip right into where you're going to see the light and dark meet here in a second. There it is at my finger. So now it's time to talk about this, okay? So for the longest time, I've been working with this all taped up, all wrapped up and everything because I wanted to make sure nothing got away from me. At this point, I now need to trim the cord out. The cord is going to be shorter than the fabric. I want to do the same thing at the end that I did at the beginning, but now I need to make sure because I still have a raw edge right here. I also fortunately lucked out this last piece is a batik. So the chances of it being very threadbare and unraveling a lot is less. So I want my cord to end right here, right at that union, okay? Because there's already a little bit of a thickness where the fabrics came together. So I'm going to cut it back just a little bit here, and I'm not going to worry about if it's going to start to fray and splay out and all of that, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my fabric about two inches longer than where the cord was. I'm going to immediately take the raw edge and I'm going to fold it up into that triangle and I'm going to fold it over one more time. So I have no more raw edges. So I was up to the fold, then over. So I've buried the raw edges. And of course you would normally want to do this before you get in so close to the machine. We just wrap it so that when we're done, there's no raw edge up in there. Now you may want to use a pin or your stiletto or something. I'm gonna just lift the presser foot, make sure everything's super tight in here. And we're actually gonna now stitch. I'm gonna get that stiletto in there to really help manipulate. And I wanna let the curve of that end cord just go right in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up a little bit just to lock it in real nice. We're going to cut that, lift it up, and I'm making sure that it's all beautifully secured right here. Nice and finished right in there. Okay, so that's really it. And like I said, it turned out 60 inches by 60 inches. It is absolutely heavy and giant, and I still almost knocked the clips over, but I'm super excited. It's absolutely beautiful. My wife and I love it for our little garden area, and I certainly hope you learned. Number one, don't be intimidated by these big projects, right? I had been told for years and years it was darn near impossible to do such a thing, and it wasn't hard at all. I just needed to make sure I had a little bit of space organized and really just taking it slow to keep everything flat while I was doing the zigzag between the layers of cording was the key. I actually found the more things I tried to build around, the harder it was to manipulate. So I just went back to just having a little bit of extra structure in the middle to keep everything moving through smooth. The other things I'll remind you of, use your polyester thread. It's very, very strong. I didn't even point out, but I was using a jeans denim style needle, the size 80 um, slash 12, nice and strong. I used the same needle for the entire project, all 650 foot of cord. Like I said, if I find a great link or a great access to the cording for you, I'll include that into the description. Right now, we've got great products down there for you. Make sure you're subscribing to all of our videos. I love having you here for all of this content. And let me know what else you would like to learn. Until I see you next time right here, folks, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.